Thank you very much. So this is my farm store. Winter's just starting to get hold in Maine. The pool's looking a little bit brisk at the moment. This is where the bees can get water, but I choose to give them an alternative. The biggest problem that you have with neighbours is if you have a water source that is further away than the nearest swimming pool. Swimming pools are a perfectly good source of water for the bees. Chlorine and all, they don't mind the chlorine, but neighbours don't like bees in their pool. So the important thing is to give them an alternative source of water. And even though my swimming pool is only 100 yards from my beehives, 40 of them, I don't have much problem at all with bees in my pool because I've got a variety of water sources around the beehive. First of all, this little ditch here. This ditch is full of water during the spring and the, fall and the summer. And it goes all the way around the bee yard. But on the other side of the bee yard over there, I've got a pond, which we'll have a look at. Covered in snow and ice at the moment. There's the pond. So 99% of my bees go to the pond right here for their water source during the summer and the bees are just here and I've got bees in a variety of style of hives from styrofoam to the typical Langstroth wood hive a lot of stored empty nukes fence down try not to trip over it. 
just had a little bit of snow last night. It's a dusting. But already, even though it's only 30 degrees outside, still got dead bees in the snow, freshly dropped dead bees. Dead bees in the snow is a very good sign. Just a scattering of dead bees is exactly what you want to see. Every one of these hives has tens of thousands of bees in them. And every hive will have bees that are dying every day. If the bee can, and she feels that she's coming to her life's end, she'll try to leave the hive and fly, fly out. If the cluster is warm enough and the bee is warm enough, she can get out to the landing board, take off and crash in the snow and die. When the, if it's too cold, the cluster cannot generate heat inside the hive enough and the bee drops to the bottom of the hive and can't even make it out the door. So she dies in the hive. So when it's really cold in the winter, we'll get an accumulation of dead bees at the bottom of the hive. Every hive will have that. On a warm day, some of the bees may start clearing out those dead bees. We go from having a dozen or so, a couple of dozen dead bees in front of the hive, and they might be 10 or 20 yards away, to having dozens every hour being dropped on the snow. And we may end up with 100 dead bees in front of the hive, maybe 200, maybe 400. All depends on how warm it is and how well the bees can do it, clearing those dead bees out before the cluster has to get back together and keep warm. So it's very quiet in the bee yard in the middle of the winter. Can't wait till spring comes and these bee I can open up these beehives again. Beekeeping is so just such a fantastic experience. And those of us that have kept bees for a little while, this time of year is so frustrating because we just want to get in there and play with the bees. But right now, they're hunkering down. And we just have to be patient, keep them as cozy as we can. We've done everything we can in the fall to get them ready for the winter. And now, now we just have to sit there and pray and hope that everything's fine. Now, we'll probably come out here in the, later in the winter and the snow might even bury some of these hives. That's why we have an upper entrance in the hives as well as a lower entrance. So the upper entrance is there so that there's less of a distance that the bees have to go to to be able to get out when the hive is buried in snow. Now obviously the smaller the hive the more vulnerable they are to being buried in snow but it will be it's not a problem if they're buried in snow. As long as that hive is generating heat that's good. Dead bees at the entrance absolutely normal.